Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're here today doing a bit of a game discussion. I want to talk a little bit about the current state of new game releases, if you will. The ways in which we as the consumer are exposed to these games before they even launch uh, through media, through early criticism, through developer-driven previews and uh, actual marketing. Things have changed quite a bit in the last uh, 10 years. You know, I can look back at my like 21, 22 year history of playing video games since I was like five years old and think about the ways that I absorbed video games uh, over that 20, 20 plus year period, right? The ways in which things have changed. Obviously as a very young kid, uh, magazines and things like that were very difficult to come by for me anyways. It's not like I was going every day and picking up magazines. Occasionally I'd make my way to the local flea market and grab like a strategy guide or the latest issue of Nintendo Power. It wasn't until I was like 10 or 12 where I actually started having like subscriptions as Christmas gifts and then as I got a little bit older had my first job paper route you know magazines were like the primary way that I absorbed information for games uh, of course the internet age would become about get more and more popular it'd be easier to find things online uh, websites like very early IGN you know would make their way onto the scene and we'd start seeing a media sort of evolve when it came to games coverage it went from written form even on the internet, to video content like we see today. Video content obviously being one of the most popular ways today to preview video games. Well, writing is still very popular, and I think there's a lot of great people out there writing about games. But we're here today to talk a little bit more about uh, the preview process, and again, how we're exposed to that, and how I think that affects us as consumers and as people who are just looking to play games both positively and negatively. I've been thinking about this a lot with Destiny 2 just around the corner. I've been trying to go in sort of blind, if you will, to Destiny 2. I like mystery. I miss that portion of playing games for the very first time. You know, especially when I'm covering a game, there's a certain requirement to like know everything about it and to share that with people because number one, that does get you views, that gets you exposure, that brings people to your channel. Um, but it's also what the majority, I think, is looking for. I think most of us today want to know everything for one reason or another. And I think this creates a very interesting loop. So you can pretty much learn as much as you want about a game before launch these days. Uh, whether it's directly from the developer or through like pre-release marketing through streamers and YouTubers or through actual early games coverage. There's a variety of ways in which this works, right? And it's up to you to pretty much gauge how much you want to know and how little you want to know. Or at least that's how it's been for like the last five years. I feel like, especially in the AAA industry, it's like turned into a requirement that the developer puts out as much information about their game as possible. I think for publishers and developers, it works as sort of a double-edged sword. It's part marketing hype. They're building hype and interest for their game by showcasing what they want to showcase. But sometimes the other side of it is making sure that people know exactly what their game is. Some developers do actually showcase and say, hey, this is exactly what our game is. You know, here you can take your early criticism and run with it. For the most part, I think it leans towards the hype marketing side of things, which is why it's so dangerous. But either way, the end result is effectively you as the consumer, the person looking to play the game, knowing more and more about that world to the point where you boot it up day one and you know all of the mechanics, you know all the ins and outs, you know all the button presses and all the hidden bits. It's getting harder and harder to find games that give us true mystery and true discovery the first time we boot it up. Uh, again, a lot of that to do with marketing and a lot of that to do with game design, which is why I think uh, Dark Souls, Souls Experiences, uh, games like Spelunky, Binding of Isaac, Breath of Wild, for example, are so coveted by their audiences, by the people who fall in love with them, because they do give us as the player so much to discover. Uh, you know, I think Nintendo, probably one of the best things they did with Breath of Wild was to not really show us any of the game over its insanely long development cycle. They, you know, they teased it. We saw little bits and pieces of what the game could be like. We had a general idea of this is Breath of Wild in a very, very, very vague sense. And then they drop a bomb on us and, you know, we got all these wonderful little mechanics, the cooking system. I didn't even know about that before I played the game. I didn't know, like, how they were going to handle climbing and things like that. You know, for me, there were so few videos that it was really easy to detach. So I ended up having a game that may not be the best game ever made, but it's all these little hidden mechanics and all these things you get to experience for the very first time when you sit down and play the game that make it very special. And Destiny had a lot of that as well, the original Destiny, you know? I think that's why for me, despite the issues that I had with the game in terms of loot balancing and just the, the way progression scaled, 
it was still a game that I very much fell in love with because that mystery was mostly intact. While there wasn't as much as I had been hoping for or as even as we had been promised with early marketing, there was still some of it and that made me very excited, right? So for Destiny 2, it's a lot about the mysteries that Bungie has decided to inject into the experience that they're not telling us about. And we know there are plenty of those. And I think that's what makes raids and strikes so exciting is that you can go in, not watch any of the previews, unless you already have, in which case, shame on you. Not really shame on you, personal preference, but, you know, and you can have that first strike experience and have it be a complete mystery. Again, I think as consumers, with so much information being out on the web before launch, it's it's all about personal choice, but it's also a very difficult personal choice because I think a lot of us, we want to self-critique before a game goes live, right? We want to be able to make our own decision. We want to decide, do I pre-order this game even, dangerously enough? You know, do I buy it day one? Most people don't seem to be willing to wait for reviews, and that's shown time and time again in the sales numbers for games that end up doing really poor post-launch, but that do insanely well day one. You know, there's an absurd amount of, uh, of hate post-launch for No Man's Sky, yet it was one of the best-selling games on Steam. You see that the majority of the people pre-ordered it, bought it day one, just based on the videos that they had consumed. Again, so in that instance, you know, potentially falling into the marketing hype, so it's interesting, right? We have this obsession, I think, as humans to just make our own judgment. You could potentially just not watch anything whatsoever, right? Don't watch any of the preview content. Don't watch any of the, like, you know, Vidocs that the developer and the publisher do. Wait for a review. Watch a review. A lot of people do reviews that are spoiler-free, and then go play the game and enjoy all of its mysteries. That was sort of the old-school way of doing things because you didn't have the first choice. You know, you sat down. You opened up a magazine, your copy of Game Informer. You sat back and said, ah, let me just open this up. Oh, yeah, that looks cool. Okay, I can see the mechanics there. Oh, okay, they don't want to ruin anything else. That's all they're going to show me. And then you'd wait till the next month. The magazine would ship just on time. You know, the game's about to come out. You'd read the review. Okay, yeah, I'm, I think it's got a good rating. You know what? I agree with Dave here. I really agree with Ryan from OXM back in the day. You know, him and I share a similar opinion. I'm going to pick up this game. I'm going to pick this game up. I'm going to go check it out, and maybe I'll love it, you know, and it'll have all the mysteries intact. Again, it's very difficult to do that, and I understand because for the last, you know, five years, I've very rarely let myself play a game blind at launch. You know, unless the developer keeps us in the dark, I usually seek out the information that is given to us. Um, usually out of excitement, but I know for some of us, again, it's out of that, that self-critique side of things. So what I'd very much like to ask you guys today is how much information do you look to absorb about a game pre-launch and why? Is it because you're excited about that game, you want to know more, or is it because you want to know as much about the game as possible so you can do a self-critique before you make your purchase decision? How many of you actually wait for reviews this day and age? How many of you, even about the games you're most excited for, wait for a review and then purchase the product? You know, for me, it's definitely a shifting spectrum, and I think many of you will agree, depending on the developer, depending on, you know, the, the honestly, the first impressions I get for the game the first time we see it, you know, I make that decision. You know, uh, for example, The Witcher 3. It's a day one purchase for me, right? Like, no doubt about it. You know, you don't even have to show me the game. I'm there to support CD Projekt because I loved the first game. I loved The Witcher 2. I think they're an amazing developer. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the game. Destiny 2, it's a similar situation for me, you know? I'm looking forward to the mystery. I liked Destiny 1. Had Bungie not done as well as they had did later on with DLC like the Taken King, I probably wouldn't be purchasing Destiny 2, but they showed a respect for the community. They showed uh, an awareness, I think, to what they needed to do to make the game better, and they went out of their way to do that, you know? So that's why I'm here looking to play Destiny 2 day one. That's why I'm going to pick it up and buy it day one. I'm willing to give them my support and to experience the product firsthand for myself. So let me know how you guys think about this. Uh, again, it's just an interesting topic I wanted to think about. You know, we... We have so much freedom this day and age. And again, I think we're seeing a shift, though, which is exciting, where developers are doing a better job at saying, hey, here's the game, you know, but we want to actually keep some stuff hidden. And it's still, at the end of the day, is 100% up to us as the consumer to make that decision and say, okay, you know, is that is that just a highlight reel? You know, how do I want to go about approaching this product? Anthem, I think, is a great example, honestly, long term. We look at a game like Anthem, and it's... Right now, that for me, is excited as I want to be by it, that is a purely hype-driven product right now. We know so little about it. The open world that they showcase, that they they try to, you know, push upon is like, look how big this open world is going to be, and you can go underwater, and it's crazy detailed. That seems pretty impossible. 
by today's technological standards, you know? So that's where you ask yourself just how real is this? Just how much is marketing? And you just keep waiting till that next piece, right? So maybe next year we'll learn a little bit more and maybe we can make a better decision. Let me know your thoughts, guys, down in the comment section below. Just a heads up for everybody, Tuesday, starting as soon as the servers go live, I'm going to be streaming a ton of Destiny 2 uh, throughout the week on PlayStation 4, then moving to Xbox One. I'm looking to squat up with Butterbar and Iniquity. We're going to be doing, hopefully, some triple stream, triple content stuff as we run through all the Destiny 2 beta content. Lots of Destiny 2 beta coverage. I really want to see how you guys receive it. Is this something you're interested in seeing me cover on the channel here? Feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. And definitely share your thoughts with the discussion down there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember to play smart. Remember to play to challenge yourself. But most importantly, remember to play for fun.